To practice calculating formal charge, we have four different compounds, and they each kind of show a different aspect of things you'll run across when you calculate formal charge. There's also a description of the formal charge equation, and it shows you how that's set up and what the different terms mean. The way to use the video, work out the problem, say H2O, find the formal charges for each atom, and then below, you'll see that there's a time. That's the time in the video that you should go to, and then check your work. Watch the explanation if you're having problems, and then move on to the next one. This is Dr. B and enjoy the video. I won't go into the theory of formal charges a lot here, other than to say that when we draw our Lewis structures, sometimes we have Lewis structures that we can draw two different ways and still obey the octet rule or still have a valid Lewis structure. What the formal charges do is they tell us a reasonably reliable way to tell what's the most favorable or most likely Lewis structure that we'll see in that molecule in the real world. And the best Lewis structure from the formal charge standpoint is one that has formal charges closest to zero. Zero is even better. So this is the equation we're using for formal charges. So in the equation, we calculate formal charge for individual elements. So for instance, let's look at the oxygen up here. The number of valence electrons for oxygen is six. It's in group 16 or 6A on the periodic table. So we know oxygen has six valence electrons. For the unbonded electrons, these are the ones not involved in chemical bonds. So when we look at the H2O, we have these electrons here, this pair, and this pair. They're not bonded to another element. They're called unbonded. So we have one, two, three, four unbonded electrons around that oxygen atom. Finally, we're going to subtract one half of the bonded electrons. These are the electrons between elements. So for the oxygen, again, we have the two here. This line represents a pair or two electrons that are shared. So we have the two here and the two over here. So we have four bonded electrons, and then we would take half of that. So that's the equation that we'll be using to calculate formal charge. So pause and figure out the number of valence electrons, then the bonded and unbonded for the oxygen, and then for the carbon in this CO2 molecule. So let's take a look at the oxygen first. Both of the oxygens are the same, so we only need to do one of them. Oxygen is in group 16, sometimes called 6A on the periodic table. It has six valence electrons. It has a total of four unbonded valence electrons, and then a total of four bonded valence electrons. And that's because each one of those lines represents a pair of electrons, and we have two lines. So two plus two equals four. For the central carbon, carbon's in group 14, sometimes called 4A. It has four valence electrons. It has no unbonded valence electrons. They're all involved in bonds between the carbon and the oxygen atoms. And then finally, bonded valence electrons. We can see there are one, two, three, four bonds. Each one has two electrons, has a pair. So four times two, we have a total of eight bonded valence electrons for carbon. So use this information to calculate formal charge on the compounds in the practice problems. We'll start with H2O, water. It's a little bit simple, but it's a good one to start with. So let's calculate the formal charge here for this hydrogen. So I have my hydrogen and the number of valence electrons for hydrogen, it's in group one. It has one valence electron. Hydrogen will always have one valence electron. We'll subtract the unbonded electrons around the hydrogen and all of the electrons for the hydrogen they're involved in this chemical bond. So unbonded electrons, there are none. Then we're gonna take one half of the bonded electrons. That's this right here. This is what's connecting the oxygen and the hydrogen. It's the chemical bond. The line represents a pair of valence electrons. So we have two. And when we do the math, one minus zero minus one, we have a formal charge of zero. And we can put that up here just like this. And since this hydrogen is exactly the same as this one, we can put the formal charge for that one. We don't have to recalculate. For the oxygen, oxygen is in group 16, sometimes called 6A. It has six valence electrons minus the unbonded valence electrons. We have two here and two here. So we have a total of four unbonded valence electrons minus the bonded electrons. So we have the pair here, there's two plus these two, that's four. And six minus four is two minus four over two, that's also zero. So we can put a zero up here for the oxygen. It's not surprising that the formal charges are zero. It's a fairly simple atom, but it's a good example and it'll help us as we do more complex problems. 
for CO2, let's start with this oxygen right here. So oxygen, and oxygen has six valence electrons. It's in group 16, 6a on the periodic table, minus unbonded electrons. We have two here and two here, so four unbonded valence electrons. Subtracting from that the bonded electrons, two plus two is four of the bonded electrons, and we're dividing that by two. When we add this up, we have six minus four, that's two minus four over two. So the formal charge on the oxygen is zero, and we can just write a little zero up here, and we can do the same for this oxygen since it's symmetrical, it looks exactly the same. For the carbon here in the center, carbon has four valence electrons, unbonded, there are none. All of the electrons are involved in these bonds here with the oxygen. And then bonded electrons, we have two, four, six, eight. So eight divided by two and four minus zero minus essentially four is zero. So the formal charge on the central carbon there, that's zero as well. So we have our Lewis structure here for NO3 minus the nitrate ion. Do note there are resonance structures. You could put the double bond here or you could put it here, but really the way we'd go about calculating formal charges, it's the same. So let's start out by calculating the formal charge of this oxygen here with the single bond. So we have our oxygen, which has six valence electrons, unbonded two, four, six, minus the one half of the bonded. And we have just this pair of electrons here, two over two. So six minus six minus two over two, we have a negative one formal charge on this oxygen right here. And since this oxygen is the same as this one, let's put a negative one there as well. For the oxygen with the double bond, that equals six valence electrons minus unbonded, just the two plus two, four, minus one half of the bonded. And this oxygen has two, four bonded valence electrons and six minus four minus four over two, that gives us zero. So we'll put our zero right up here. For the nitrogen there in the center, nitrogen equals five valence electrons minus unbonded. All of these electrons are involved in chemical bonds. So we have zero for unbonded minus one half of the bonded two, four, six, eight. So that's eight, five minus zero minus four, that gives us a plus one on that nitrogen. So we'll put a plus one up here. So for these formal charges, if you add them up, minus one and a plus one and a minus one, that gives us an overall charge on this entire molecule of negative one. And that makes sense because it has a negative charge. So those are the formal charges for NO3 minus the nitrate ion. For XeO3, xenon trioxide, I've drawn two Lewis structures. And both of these Lewis structures are correct. They follow the rules for writing Lewis structures. We have octets for the oxygen atoms on both structures. Xenon, it's below period three on the periodic table. It's an exception to the octet rule. It can have an expanded octet, so it's okay as well. And the only difference is I have two double bonds here, and on this side, I have a single bond and a triple bond. So I'm using the same number of valence electrons. The oxygens are obeying the octet rule, so they're valid Lewis structures. So which one's the best? And that's what the formal charges are gonna tell us. So let's find the formal charges We'll start over here and work with this oxygen first. So for this oxygen, six valence electrons for oxygen minus the unbonded, two, four unbonded, and then minus one half of the bonded electron. So we have one, two bonds, two electrons in each, four unbonded electrons. So six minus four minus two gives us zero. So the formal charge on this oxygen right here with the double bond, that's zero. And in fact, all of these here are the same, so they're gonna be zero. For the xenon in the center, xenon is in group 18, 8A. It's a noble gas, it has eight valence electrons. Then unbonded, there are two of them up there. And then bonded, we're gonna divide that by two. We have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 bonded valence electrons. So eight minus two is six, minus 12 over two. That gives us zero as well. So the formal charge on the xenon here is zero. So this looks like a pretty good structure because all the formal charges are zero. If we calculate the formal charges for this molecule right here, this is what we end up with. You can see that our formal charges are not as close to zero. These are all zero. Here we have a minus one 
And then we have this plus one on an oxygen, which is kind of odd because oxygen is very electronegative. So this structure here is going to be less likely. This is the most favorable or best Lewis structure for XeO3. Wow, so you've made it to the end of the video here. And hopefully now you're pretty good at calculating formal charges. Formal charges are really useful in chemistry because they let us quickly kind of figure out what the charge density, where the charge is on a molecule. And if we know that, that tells us something about the physical properties and how it'll bond to other molecules. That's pretty important when you're looking at things like drug chemistry or materials science. This is Dr. B with a lot of practice on formal charges, and thanks for watching.